Hi there, my name is Tyler from DualCasterMage.com, and in this video I'm going to be guiding you through a scientific method for brewing and building a commander deck on X-Mage. If you get it down, you'll be able to whip up new EDH decks in less than an hour. What I'm about to show you is my personal methodology for building commander decks quickly, utilizing the best tools I'm aware of to do so. Really, this is not limited to X-Mage and could be applied to Cockatrice, MTGO, or Paper. This might seem like a long process at first, but if you systematize it, you can go through it really fast and save lots of time in the long run. It's especially useful if you like to brew up tons of new commander decks like I do. You're going to need a couple of software programs to do this, but don't worry, both are free. The first is Xmage itself, which you can download at xmage.de. The second is any spreadsheet program such as Google Sheets, which is free, or Microsoft Excel, which is paid. Let's get started. Okay, the first step as we're getting started here is to install Xmage. You can see plenty of other tutorials online for how to do that. Make sure you've already downloaded all of the card images, otherwise this will be painful for you, trust me. Then you want to open De Xmage's deck editor, so click that little button there. It's just going to be blank at first, and um, you don't want to decide on a commander. For this example, I'm going to use Torgar, Famine Incarnate, but before I even search for that, I'm going to do this optional step, which I like to do, which is to utilize a, a template file for some of the really premium staples for that color identity. And I've already created one, and you can create one on your own too if you want to. Okay, so I'm just going to load this black staples.dck file. And basically all this is is just um, some of the, uh, the best black cards that I'm going to want to play in pre pretty much any black deck that I make, mono black deck. It's kind of based around color identity. So for example, Thoughtseize. Uh, I'm going to want to run this card in pretty much in like an aggro deck, a control deck, a combo deck. It's, it's just so good. It's going to go in so many decks, probably more than 50% of my deck. So I'm, I'm just going to include it, include it in this template file. That way I don't have to search for it over and over and over again each time as I build more, more decks. Then the next step is to just search for your commander in the uh, this little search bar here. Um, you don't have to type in the full name, just uh, enough that you can find it there. Once once you select it in the top pane, then you can click on this little green and yellow button, which is add selected cards to sideboard. Then it comes over here. It's This is your sideboard, or in the case of Commander, your command zone, essentially. Um, and then what you want to uh, do is save the file so you don't lose anything. And I'm going to save this in my, in my desktop just for this example. And I'm going to call it Torgar all considerations. And the reasoning, reason I'm you uh, putting this all considerations in there is because I'm going to include many cards, m much more than 100, when I'm considering uh, what, to, what to include in this deck. And this way I have that file as a backup in case I want to add some of those cards back in as I go back and play the deck and refine it more and more. Okay, for this next section, we're going to be filling in some more generic playables. Another way to do a little work on the front end to speed up your deck building process later is to keep a spreadsheet with a list of other common playables or quote unquote staples loosely defined. Uh, these are the cards that might show up in about 20% or more of your EDH decks. Uh, it includes cards from the template.dck file I showed you earlier, like these cards. Um, but uh, basically, here, here's an example of my spreadsheet here in the black section. Uh, what this does is make sure you don't miss any strong cards that might slip your line, your mind later in the selection process. For example, let's say you're building a green ramp deck and you want to include all the one mana uh, green mana dorks. Well, you might forget that uh, Arbor Elf counts even though it doesn't literally say that it adds green mana if you do an online search. Um, so I have a section for each of the five colors, colorless, and then the two color pairs. I haven't bothered with the triple color cards and higher since it hasn't really seemed worth it yet. But... Uh, anyway, let's just do an example here. You want to quickly scan through this list to see cards that would make sense in the new commander deck you're, you're building. Um, let's just, for example, say I want to include Slaughter Pact in my Torgar deck. So I go back to Xmage, and then I start to type Slaughter Pact. You can just type Slaughter PA, and it should come up. You just kind of you know find an art you like, and then double click on it, and then it shows up right there in your main deck. Uh, be sure to save often during this process because Xmage crashes every now and then and you don't want to lose your work. And have the save button here is more like a save as button, so you just kind of got to save over the file you were, you were working on, but it's no big deal. 
All right, part three is the really fun part, adding unique and specific synergy cards to the deck. So you can start by adding in any cards you can think of off the top of your head that would work well in your deck. So for example, Torgar basically cuts their life total in half. And I know if I'm playing dual commander, they're starting at 20, going to 10. I know the card uh, Soren's Vengeance deals 10 to a player. So that could be kind of nice. So I add that in, there's Soren's Vengeance. Uh, the next, uh, next best resource you can uh, use to find cards really quickly is edhrec.com. This is a website that kind of aggregates all sorts of commander decks. It's based around multiplayer. Um, now they have a brawl section, but even for dual commander, you can find some pretty, pretty nice tech in here. So just search for your commander you're building, and it'll give you um, a bunch of cards divided by category, um, usually a card type, but they have new cards, signature cards here. So these are like really unique cards that are off, are found in Torgar, but not very many other decks. So um, Center Autocrat kind of makes sense. Um, let me just uh, add that in real quick. Center Autocrat, okay. It's in the deck. You just keep going back and forth, adding cards. And... Um, just browse that list there. And the next, another good resource you can use is scryfall.com. This is a massive, uh, powerful Magic the Gathering card search. Click on the advanced search bu button and you can search for any text that appears in the rules text. So we're gonna say uh, create creature token because we want a lot of fodder for Torgar. The only other thing you wanna make sure to do is select the right color identity here in this commander section and click enter. And um, I usually like to sort by converted mana cost right there and just kind of go and see what makes sense here. It's going to start with the zero costers, but, I, you know, hanger back walker might be a nice one. So just, you know, go back to X mage, add the hanger back walker and just keep going like that. It's really powerful search. You can do a whole lot with it. And again, we're just kind of going for anything that could conceivably make the cut in the deck that uh, we're building. You can also use uh, Scryfall to easily find lands that fit with your commander's color identity. So let's go back and um, just look for lands here. Clear this text part and type land in the type line and see what we find. And, you know, there's going to be a lot here, um, but I, I like to do this pretty much every time to make sure I don't miss anything, you know? Maybe you want Bajuka Bog, that's a nice one in the black deck. Just go and add it back to your deck. When you're done adding synergy cards, be sure to give your all considerations.dck file a final save in Xmage, because uh, for the reasons we discussed earlier. Okay, part four, cutting cards. So now we're going from the most fun part to the least fun part. By now you've probably filled your deck editor with over 100 considerable cards, so obviously we need to trim that number down quite a bit. The uh, most obvious way to cut cards is simply to scan through your your main deck looking for your worst card, then your second worst card, and then your third, uh, third worst card, etc., and double click them so they disappear. But I found that this is often a time-consuming and overly agonizing process. It kind of feels like shooting in the dark a bit, and it's hard to know where to start. But if you decide to do it this way, you're gonna to want to save as your final deck list right away. So that way you preserve the uh, all considerations uh, file for reference later. Um, anyway, I developed an optional um, alternate method for cutting cards that's a little more proactive and focused. Instead of looking at it, at it as a cutting process, I think of doing a second pass for definite keeps or uncuttables. For this part, we're gonna whip out our spreadsheet again. And uh, I have a new tab here. I call it deck list template. Um, you can, you know, design this however you want. Um, basically, it just has a list of converted mana costs because I find that the easiest way to organize this. And um, a, a formula that totals the number of uncuttables. And then a target for what I want here. So let's say I'm building a control deck. I want a lot of lands. Uh, I want 42 lands, which means 100 minus 42, 58 non-land cards. So that means I can add 58 cards here. And so I'm going to just go back and forth between my uh, Xmage uh, deck editor and my spreadsheet here. I'm just going to go duress, uh, thought sees, and then you can even abbreviate cards if you want, if you want to save time. I okay for inclusion of Kozilek. And then uh, I know this sounds really tedious, but um, actually it saves time in the long run because just going and blindly cutting cards here doesn't seem to work out very well for me. Maybe your mileage may vary. Um, but another bonus you get for doing it this way is then you have another 
alternate file, it saves your deck list in case something happens to X Mage, or you wanna, let's say you wanna reference your deck file while you're playing an X Mage match. So, you know, you wanna tutor for something, but you're not sure what you have in your deck. This is a nice way to do it rather than switch between windows within X Mage. The most important thing about this whole process is to be sure to only include cards you're 100% playing in your deck. Like, you don't even have to think about whether or not it's gonna be in your deck. And this is very important if you actually want this process to be easy. So hopefully at the end of this process, your list of uncuttables here is less than your, um, your uncuttables are less than your, your target, in which case you get to add additional cards back. So I had, you know, I had Slaughter Pact in here or whatever. Oh, I didn't, I didn't put it in this list, but I wanna, you know, I got room for it. So let me just add that in there. Okay, that's nice. Then you wanna get this, this, these numbers to match here. If you're like me and you're uh, too attached to your sweet tech cards, you're you're actually going to have to cut cards even still from from this group of group of cards. So, uh, in that case, you know, well, well, maybe I decide I can't afford really to play Slaughter Pact. Often, then I'll just like cut the cell and then paste it down here under this like last few cuts area, and that way I have kind of a record of the last few cuts I made in the deck, which can be kind of handy if I'm tweaking the deck later on. So again, when your uncuttables count matches your, your target, you wanna go back to X Mage and then save as uh, your deck list. And again, uh, don't don't include the all considerations this time, just name it um, for whatever you, you know, whatever you want. All right, our last set of steps here, part five is to refine your final deck within X Mage. Now that you know exactly what nine land cards you wanna keep in your deck, it's time to cut out the chaff from your X Mage deck list. Simply go through and double click on all the cards that didn't make your final cut and refer to your spreadsheet deck list from the last section if you went through that step. Um, so for example, uh, this is incomplete, but let's say I had Duress, Fatal Push, and Inquisition. I'm gonna go back to my deck. Oh, there they are, Expedition Map wasn't part of that. I'm just gonna double click it and it's gone. Just keep doing that for the whole, all the non-land cards. And for, uh, for the land cards, the non-basic lands, uh, kind of just go through, use, a, use your judgment, kind of see what you can afford to play, what you can't afford to play. Let's say my color requirements are too tough. I'm going to, uh, can't afford to play Dust Bowl. I'm going to double click that and it's gone. Um, then you're going to want to add basic lands to your deck. And you can just type for, uh, type a basic land type in here in the search bar and type swamp. Um, what's going to come up is a lot of crap like the creature with swamp walk and you have to sort through a bunch of random stuff and ain't nobody got time for that. So your best bet is just to filter by set here. You can go Dominaria block and then right away you can find maybe a swamp you like. Double click it there and just keep adding basic lands till you get that main deck number of cards up to 99 and save your final deck list and you're good to go. You can use this brewing and deck building process for any commander type format. I've brewed a few brawl decks already using this method. I hope you guys found this video useful and if you stumbled upon this video and would like to see more 1v1 commander related content, including gameplay and deck techs, I'd highly recommend subscribing to my channel. I post new videos every week so there's always something fresh to watch. Thanks for watching and catch you next time.